Hi everybody, my name is Debbie Ray and I'm the owner of PedigreePups.com and today I'd like to take a couple of minutes to share with you some information about a topic called canine zoonosis. Now exactly what are these? Well canine zoonoses are diseases that are passed from a canine or feline to human beings. Typically you can divide these diseases into three different groups based on how they're transmitted from animals to human beings. This also makes it easy to divide them into three groups based on how you actually control or treat the diseases. So the three ways that you can actually spread any of these are number one through contaminated urine or feces, number two through hair or, uh, and skin contact, and number three through any kind of bites or scratches. So first of all, let's talk about the first group, uh, if you get anything that's through uh, contaminated urine or feces. So let's talk a little bit about hookworms. Hookworms actually enter the dog's body in whatever uh, actual area comes in contact with the feces contaminated soil, be it you know, the their bottom of their paws or their belly if they lay down on it or whatever. Uh, these are seen very common in the south and, and these parasites are unsuited to ideally live in human beings. Traditionally, they die after crawling several inches underneath the layer of the skin in humans. Uh, this causes inflammation as a result of these parasites and also causes a condition called creeping eruption. And this can last for several weeks or months depending on you know, the actual severity of it. Leptospirosis. Now you've probably heard of this in you know, talking to your vet maybe about your dog or whatever and their vaccinations and that sort of thing. Now leptospirosis happens when a dog comes in contact with contaminated drinking water or swimming in contaminated water licking their fur off once they've been in this contaminated water or by eating any kind of food that's contaminated with animal urine. Many animals are thought to carry leptospirosis, though rats are often considered the most often, you know, often seen culprit. Uh, this results in, uh, in humans by actually having flu-like symptoms like uh, body aches or chills or vomiting, fever, and, and, and headaches. Sometimes kidney damage can occur as well. Um, this disease is not usually fatal though, but it does make its host really miserable for weeks at a time. Next, let's talk a little bit about roundworms. Now, if these parasites are swallowed by human beings, they migrate into their body tissues and can cause damage, including you know, the symptoms of uh, things like fever or liver enlargement, which can last up to a year in length, uh, depending on you know, the severity of the, the uh, disease. These t parasites are most commonly found in small children, however, usually around you know, two to four years of age, uh, who mistakenly swallow these eggs and become infected themselves. If the children are playing in any kind of an area in which an animal has pooped in the past and they don't wash their hands immediately after coming in contact with those eggs and then they stick their hands in their mouths or the eyes or whatever, this is a very common way of, of uh, receiving roundworm. This is often rarely fatal, however, the disease can be really long-lasting. Right, okay, let's talk a minute about tapeworms. Now, tapeworms can easily be ingested anytime a dog swallows a, fe a flea that's actually carrying the infection. Uh, when, you know, when they're chewing or biting at their coat or whatever, because the flea's really bugging them. Uh, if children, you know, can get it the same way, although typically they don't, you know, chew on their coats. Um, the usual way that people get tapeworm infestation is is when um, you eat it in undercooked uh, pork or beef. And toxoplasmosis is uh, often seen uh, anytime someone picks up, uh, you know, contaminated cat feces, or if they come in contact with contaminated soil. Uh, rarely this causes death in humans because, you know, most people develop a resistance to it throughout their lives, you know, because of normal exposure. But it can cause birth deformities in children that are born to mothers who do not have this, um, this resistance to it. So oftentimes you'll, you'll hear, you know, uh, pregnant people or pre pregnant mothers are told don't mess with, with ki you know, kitty litter or whatever. Well, this is why. You just don't want to get toxoplasmosis. Okay, so how do you actually prevent getting any kind of waste transmitted disease? Well, there are a few basic precautions that everyone should take uh, to, to not get any of these. First of all, you want to clean up all pet droppings and wash your hands each and every time you come in contact with contaminated soils. And it's really, really important that you teach your children you know, these steps and make them follow them religiously. 
Next, if your dog has gone wading or swimming or played in any kind of water, which you know may have possibly contaminated with you know animal urine, then you want to make sure you bathe it as quickly as you, as you can once you get it home, just to make sure that you you know reduce that that problem of possibly getting uh, any kind of problems from from this contaminated animal urine. Okay. Let's talk a little bit now about diseases that are spread through hair and skin contact. And first of all, let's talk about fleas. Fleas prefer feeding on your dog a lot more. Than, however, you know, if they get a chance, they're not going to take a take down any reason of getting an occasional meal on a human. So, you know, if your dog has fleas, just be, be forewarned. You know, you may possibly get bitten by them as well. Ringworm. This is most commonly found in children. You know, though anybody can be affected by it. But this disease is caused by a, a skin and hair eating fungus which first appears on people as a round red scaly area and eventually it grows outward in a circular pattern and is the most common fungal disease currently reported. Okay next let's talk a couple of seconds about Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. This is a tick-borne disease and uh, it can cause symptoms such as fever, chills, headaches and that sort of thing, though it's usually not considered fatal. The symptoms, however, can last for many weeks and it can be treated with antibiotics. Most commonly, however, this disease is transmitted through the bite of an infected tick. So you may want to make sure when you're, you know, if you have to come in contact with a tick on your dog or whatever and you're trying to get it off, you want to make sure that you're wearing gloves whenever you're removing those ticks from the dog. Um, next, let's talk a little bit about scabies. Now this is a less commonly found version of mange as opposed to you know what you usually see on dogs. However, this can still cause intense itching, irritation, and thickening of any kind of skin that comes in contact with it. Animal mange can live in human skin, though it can't reproduce there. Humans have their own version of the scabies mite, but again, this is an irritation that can give you a lot of problems. So how do we prevent getting any of these skin or, or hair transmitted diseases? Again, overall, the first thing you want to do is you know keep your dog healthy uh, by providing it a, a nutritious diet and just making sure that it is as healthy as possible to help you know to help its body defend itself against any kind of diseases. The next thing you want to do is you want to frequently groom your dog, be aware of any changes in its coats. Uh, you know, pattern or, or the skin or whatever, if there's mats or if there's fleas in it or if it has ticks or whatever, you want to make sure that you're, you're very aware of the condition of your dog's coat. Herbal repellents are one good way of uh, combating, you know, most of these, these things that cause the diseases such as the ticks or the fleas. Uh, if you allow your dog to roam, if it's really stressed out, or if it comes in contact with any other dogs that, that have you know any of these these problems, that's the typical way that most most animals actually receive these diseases. So what you want to do, uh, you know, wash your hands again and uh, minimize your dog's contact with any animal that you're not used to, you know, any strange animals in your area, uh, and just make sure that you keep your animal as healthy as possible. Okay, let's talk a little bit about. Um, diseases that are actually spread through bites or scratches. So the first one we'll talk about is called cat scratch fever. Uh, some people will develop a fever and also enlarged lymph nodes near the area of the bite or scratch from a cat and it can even happen you know, up to weeks after the, 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 they actually get scratched. Though not fatal, it can be very uncomfortable and can be followed by lots of complications. Infected cat scratches or cat bites can become infected with a, you know, with different bacteria, though the symptoms are usually familiar or, or, or very similar. Um, probably the best thing to do is to thoroughly wash any area bitten or scratched by a cat and clean it you know, thoroughly and very often just to make sure you can prevent any kind of potential disease. Now, rabies is one that, that a lot of people have heard of, I'm sure. Uh, virtually 100% fatal once the clinical symptoms appear. This disease is carried by a virus that's transmitted through the saliva of any infected animal that's biting. The symptoms include frothing at the mouth, uh, extreme behavioral or personality changes, uh, also convulsions, and it also often makes the animal very aggressive or they can stagger. They can appear just really out of it. They're, they just have this strange look in their eyes. 
if you happen upon any kind of animal showing any of these symptoms, get away from it as quickly as possible and call your nearest animal control unit or, or your nearest, you know, policeman or whatever. Uh, if you do get bitten by or scratched or something by by chance, you want to make sure if you if you can to, you know, follow it where it lives or, or be aware of where it goes so that you can uh, let the proper authority knows where you last saw it at. Um, but this is a very a very serious disease, and you do want to make sure that you, you know, just don't come in contact with this if you can. So what do we do to actually prevent getting any of these bat bite or scratch transmitted diseases? Well, the first thing you want to, again you want to keep your dog in in the healthiest, best physical condition you actually can through. Uh, giving it a, a really good diet and proper exercise and just maintaining a, a nice healthy dog. The next thing you want to do is you want to minimize your dog's contact with any uh, strange animals in your area or any sick dogs or any uh, any animals that you're not not fully aware of that are that are actually in your area and you always make sure and this is very important that your dog is, is current on his vaccine schedule. So if you'd like to learn more about any, uh, any purebred dogs, any AKC purebred dogs, I should say, uh, if you'd like to learn more about, uh, you know, read up some of some health articles or some training articles or that sort of thing, please visit us at pedigreepups.com and we provide a lot of information there on all of these topics and more. I hope you've enjoyed this information. Thank you again for your time.